Hey folks, I'm Jake Milstein at CI Security. I'm here with Mike Hamilton and Fred Langston. Uh, we're 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 popping on uh, LinkedIn Live this morning to talk about the Hafnium uh, Microsoft Exchange breach. Uh, Mike, there's new news this morning. There is new news, and so as predicted, this is now a transition to more of a ransomware operation. And uh, according to the reporting, and there's a few stories we read this morning. Um, Num number one, attacks against exchange servers are doubling every two hours. And, uh, but more importantly, it has now uh, been transitioned to anybody who has figured out how to uh, exploit the vulnerability and is now uh, going to monetize this. So the ransomware attacks are coming. And so, the, you know, according for, to the reporting. <laughs> and yeah, according to the reporting. Uh, and 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 one of the reports actually from uh, an employee at Microsoft who tweeted it out. Um, you know, Fred, your team has been working on this. Um, what are you all seeing? Well, one thing I think we're seeing is calling it Hafnium is probably a bad idea at this point because there are ten groups that are basically all attacking at once, and Hafnium probably was coming in to do the initial kind of. Uh, attacks, but everybody else has followed suit, and that's where these the ransomware gangs are probably you know flooding into the space right now. So our team is seeing an enormous amount, of course, of compromised systems. We haven't seen ransomware yet on our side, um, but this this is exactly the sort of other shoe we've been waiting to drop. And I think everybody has to think of this as like DefCon One. Um, we need to be absolutely uh, aware of everything that's going on in our networks and monitor for any signs of ransomware. Yeah, and, but, you know, ahead, also, Mike. I mean, get your prep done. Assume you are going to get whacked. Assume you are going to need to go find some backups. So, you know, if, if your backups aren't in good shape, that's a real good activity to spend Friday with. Yeah, no. so let, let's talk about that. You know, so so let's say haven't checked the backups in a while, don't know if they're there. What what steps do I take today? Well, there's two things. Uh, first one, of course, is you need to make sure you've got backups available. They need to be hopefully pretty fresh. They need to be easily accessed so you can restore quickly. But um, if you have a system, a backup system that is connected to your network in a in a full uh, full connection, and you do not have some sort of access control or a mechanism to prevent the bad guys from encrypting your ransomware, or excuse me, your backups, I would suggest you potentially sever that connection mm -hmm. uh, for a period right now until you can get a copy that is completely disconnected from the network, because they may be actively uh, back or attacking those right now. Yeah, they, they will, you know, and the, the other thing too is um, go check your insurance policy and make sure that you know what the stipulations are by your insurance company if this stuff goes down, because there's there are mistakes that you can make that will uh, have an effect on whether or not they're going to honor your claim. Um, you know, don't, you know, if, if you have an insurance policy and it says call them first, don't call us because that could create a problem. Well, so, and and I know, speaking of us, you know, I know our security operations center is watching for lateral movement. I know that we've been uh, uh, working with customers uh, and working with, with other folks who've come to us uh, to make sure that, that they have the patch or they have the information so they can figure out if they have the vulnerability to figure out if they can do the patch. If folks haven't done the patch at this point, Fred, is it too late or should they, should they do it? Well, it's, it's never too late, but... I think the assumption is now if you have been unpatched and exposed to the internet, it's it's almost assured that you've been compromised at this point, uh, almost assured. Um, I mean, when you have 10 groups all actively trying to exploit the same thing in basically a race amongst these 10 groups, we've never seen this before. Um, and clearly there's some, some level of coordination behind the scenes, whether it's uh, a particular auction site uh, had somebody finally used a very expensive vulnerability, that value of that vulnerability dropped. So they made it really cheap and everybody got it the same day. And everybody's trying to race to grab as many of these unpatched systems as possible. So I, in my mind, 
you have to do some level of investigation if you have not patched, even if you don't necessarily feel that something's happened. I would go through, run the scripts that Microsoft has provided anyways to make sure. And it, so let's say you have patched. Let's say you've looked at it. Let's say you're like, you know what? I, I, I worked on this. I got it out of the system. I either worked with a consultant like you or your team, or I worked with somebody else, or I did it myself. Do I feel okay today? So here, here, here's, here's the hardest part of this whole conversation. Um, this particular vulnerability essentially will give you domain administrator level privileges if you know with a, a little manipulation um that essentially says that any residence time the bad guys had they can do anything they want install backdoors uh, uh put booby trap you know ransomware files that are going to go off in two weeks um uh, there it's almost <laughs> limitless what they can do and our advice to our clients is you need to look deeply because everything you have potentially may be at risk. And the the downside of that is you can also look forever. If, if they haven't been successful, you keep looking because you go, I haven't found them yet. And if they weren't successful, you keep looking at infinitum and that's wasting time. So there is some balance you have to hit um, as to whether have I done enough due diligence and investigation to feel that I am not um, compromised, but <coughs> you've got to turn on, you've got to raise your level of monitoring for the next month. Uh, you should have full eyes on, I think weekends, you should not be, if you, cl if you close on weekends, don't think that that's not the perfect time for the bad guys to, to yeah, start I, going after you. I, so, I know this. Yeah. So yeah. That's, You're, I mean, Fred's right. You know, I mean, the, you know, the exchange compromise establishes the beachhead. And what happens after that largely is going to be to gain persistence so that then when they clean up that exchange server, go, oh, it's all good. It's not really all good. So, you know, Fred's point about monitoring is really important. And if you have logs, you know, firewall logs going back, look at outbound communication from your exchange server to see if anything there is weird. That's another tell that you can look for. And, you know, you may be able to identify destination IP addresses that then you see other assets in your network talking to, and that's a tell. So, you know, dust off their monitoring tools and start looking at logs and, you know, really evaluate. And I think really the assumption should be, you know, especially if you haven't gotten around to patching your exchange server, you should expect that this is coming. Yeah. Okay. I, I, would, yeah, I would also say that uh, start looking for large uh, data transfers outbound out through mm -hmm. your firewall. The mm -hmm. common MO right now is to steal a bunch of data first in case they can't actually execute the ransomware because they're still going to extort you because with the stolen data and put it on the dark web uh, auction site. So there are a number of things if it follows a normal, you know, ta tactics, techniques and procedures that they're gonna to try to steal data before they flip that switch and the ransomware attack. But again, that may have been happening, right? If you look at the timeline, this is frightening, um, how long these groups have been able to uh, use this exploit. Mm -hmm. This started it's, January 6th. Yeah, I mean, this is bad. I mean, they, they could have everything by now and we could be at the very tail end. If, if this, you know, this news from Microsoft is, is correct, we're probably at the end of what is going on. And this is the coup de grace, if you will, um, of this attack. Yeah. Um, well, this calls in a question too. You know, there's been this, you know, and I don't want to color outside the lines here, but there's been this discussion about what the retaliation is going to be towards Russia for the solar winds thing. And now we have this. China is implicated in the initial phase of this, which, you know, looked like espionage or something like that. But this thing has jumped the fence. It's gotten way out of control and there's going to be hell to pay. You know, some, this is, this is going to get politically, you know, geopolitically ugly. The, the, these 10 groups, and it's probably going to be more soon, but it already is, are, are, are geo, geographically, you know, centered in China. I mean, they are all kind of connected together. Um, so. And that's and that's a really interesting thing, too. Right. So, you know, I mean, 
there there has been 10 groups and now it's like everybody right but those 10 groups 10 independent groups operating all at the behest of a nation state is a very very strange thing and people are having some difficulty explaining um you know how all of this really fits together um because some of the uncommonalities that we see between this and you know other you know global events that have happened we know that the Chinese are typically not stealthy. They don't really care if they get caught, but this is way over the top. This is so over the top. So, you know, I'm kind of thinking that it got away from them and that's part of the problem here. And those 10 groups are maybe not so connected. You know, they're really independent, but that's neither here nor there. Get your backups done. Right. I mean, focusing on what folks need to do today, Yeah. you know, you know, if you haven't patched, you know, you're probably, you know, you're probably compromised, but, but it's never too late to patch, uh, you know, check for, you know, check for, you know, possible compromise, see if there's any data being exfiltrated, um, and do your backups. If you haven't backed up, you know, back up. If you don't know your backup procedures, uh, you know, know what they are so that if something happens, you're ready to go and check all of your IR procedures. So that means checking your insurance. That means, um, you know, making sure that you have everybody's phone number on a Saturday night or a Sunday morning. Make sure that you, uh, you know, make sure that other folks in the organization know the drill if the computers lock up, right? Um, Mike, Fred, what did I miss? Nothing. You're getting pretty good at this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just I know listen. Fred's, Fred's organization needs a little needs a little help right now because of all the phone calls we're getting. So uh, maybe you could actually jump in, Jake. I, I I I'm the one who takes all the phone calls. Um. Hey, I did put up an email address here. If if folks need to get in touch with us, info at criticalinsight.com, uh, and uh, um, and we'll get back to you. Um, but uh, everybody, stay safe. You know, hopefully, you know, come at this with calm. If you've patched. You know, hopefully you're fine. Um, and uh, then on Monday, we are going to do a uh, an hour long panel discussion about all of this and what's happened and how it happened, uh, and give people some other steps. Uh, if you're interested in that panel discussion, uh, just email uh, info at criticalinsight.com and say, hey, shoot me an invite to that, uh, and, and I'll shoot you over an invite to that. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much for jumping on here this morning, uh, and, uh, uh, and everyone stay safe this weekend. Thank All you. Right. Thanks.